Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My dear student, I am Dr. Muhammad Yasin. Today we are going to discuss uh, the extraction method that can be used for the isolation of natural products from different natural sources. So the purpose of this lecture is to learn the different extraction techniques that people are using for the isolation of natural products from different natural sources like plants. This will be my 10th lecture on natural products. So the topic of today's lecture is the extraction of natural products. So let's move towards the different methods that are used for the extraction of natural products. The key concept that you will learn from today's lecture is the solvent extraction method. I will show you how the stock apparatus is used for the extraction of the different natural products. I will demonstrate you the two methods how people are using the stock apparatus for the isolation of natural products from the plant materials. Here in this lecture I will show how people have used the stock apparatus for the isolation of capsinoids. The first thing that we are going to learn in the extraction or purification of alkaloid is the solvent extraction. Solvent extraction is basically a separation technique in which the two solvents that are invisible with each other, the first solvent is mostly the aqueous and the second solvent is mostly the organic come into contact with each other. One of these solvents contain the solute, this solute is distributed that in uh, between the two invisible phases the distribution of the solute between the two uh, phases the one is the aqueous and the other is the organic is lower by the distribution or distribution law or the partition process this technique is called the solvent extraction or the liquid liquid extraction so in this uh, uh, separation technique the solute goes from one phase into another phase and the distribution of the or the solubility of the mm, the solute between the two phases is governed by the partitioning process. On this slide I have shown you the apparatus that is used for the solvent extraction. It consists of a separating funnel. Mm, the separating funnel may be in the pear shape or it may be in the oval shape. So I have shown the separating funnel on this slide. When the solute that is either liquid or solid is added to the heterogeneous system consisting of two invisible liquids, in both of these two liquids the solute is soluble. The solute then distributes between these two invisible liquids according to the Nernst distribution law. I am not going into the detail of the solvent extraction method. I have just shown how uh, the solvent extraction method works. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My dear student, I am Dr. Muhammad Yasin. Today we are going to discuss uh, the extraction method that can be used for the isolation of natural products from different natural sources. So the purpose of this lecture is to learn the different extraction techniques that people are using for the isolation of natural products from different natural sources like sand.
if we talk about the background or the history of the use of the alkaloid and their extraction process, it brings back to the thousand years back. Natural medicine, such as traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurveda, were formed and developed in the daily life of the ancient people and in the process of their fight against diseases over thousands of years and they were they have produced a positive impact on the progress of human civilization. Today, natural medicine not only provides the primary health care needs for the majority of the population in developing countries, but have attracted more and more attention in the developed countries due to the soaring health care costs and universal financial austerity. In the United States of America, approximately 49% of the population has tried natural medicine for the prevention and treatment of diseases. Chemicals known to have medicinal benefits are considered to be active ingredients of active principles of natural medicine. Natural products have provided the primary source for new drug development. From the 1940s to the end of the 2014, nearly half of the Federal Drug Authority approved chemical drugs for the treatment of human diseases were derived from or inspired by natural products. Natural products offer more drug-like features to molecules in the in the terms of functional group, priority, and structure complexity. The amount of the active ingredients in natural medicines are always fairly low. The lab-intensive and time-consuming extraction and isolation process has been the bottleneck of the application of natural products in drug development. There is an urgent need to develop the effective and selective methods for the extraction and isolation of bioactive natural products. So that, so that is why people have developed efficient extraction methods for the extraction or the isolation of biologically active compounds from the plant material. Here in this lecture we will study the general methods for the extraction and isolation of alkaloids from the plant's material. Extraction is the first step to separate the desired natural product or the alkaloids from the raw material. Extraction methods include solid extraction, distillation method, pressing and sublimation according to the extraction principle. Solvent extraction is the most widely used method. The extraction of the natural product from the alkaloid progresses through the four stages. The, in the first stage, the solvent penetrates into the solid matrix, that is the plant material. And in the second stage, the solute dissolves in the solvents. And in the third stage, the alkaloids are diffused out of the solid matrix, that is the plant material. And in the fourth stage, the extracted solute or the alkaloids are collected. Any factor enhancing the diffusion and the solubility in the four steps or in the four stages will facilitate the extraction. The properties of the extracting, uh, the properties of the extracting solvent, the particle size of the raw material, the solvent to solid contact surface area, the extraction temperature and the extraction duration will affect the extraction efficiency. The selection of the solvent is crucial for solvent extraction. Selective the solubility, cost and safety should be considered in the selection of the solvent. Based on the law of similarity and impermissibility, like dissolve like solvent with a polarity value near to the polarity of the solute or the alkaloids are likely to perform better and vice versa. Alcohols like methanol and ethanol are universal solvents in solvent extraction for phytochemical investigation. Generally, the finer the particle size is, the better results the extraction achieved. The extraction efficiency will be enhanced by the small particle size due to the enhanced penetration of the solvent and the diffusion of the alkaloids. Too fine particle size, however, will cause the excessive absorption of the solute in the solid and difficulty in subsequent filtration. High temperature increases the solubility and the diffusion. 
temperature that too high however may cause the solvent to be lost relating to the extracts of undesirable impurities and decomposition of thermoliable components. The extraction efficiency increases with the increase in the extraction duration in certain time range. Increasing time will not affect the extraction after the equilibrium of the solute is reached inside and outside the solid material. Here on this slide, I have shown you the soft extractor. The bottom of the soft set of products is a round bottom flask that contains the solvent that is used for the solvent extraction purpose. Uh, the main assembly of the soft set of products is attached to this round bottom flask. Mm, the hair source is used to vaporize the reservoir of the solvent. The vapors of the solvent rises above and uh, enters into the soft set main assembly where it extracts the uh, where it extracts the uh, active ingredient and move back into the uh, reservoir. And this uh, process continues again and again. So here I have shown you the diagrammatically how software operators work. In order to do a soxlid extraction on my ghost peppers, I need some ethanol or ethyl alcohol. The only way I have of getting concentrated ethyl alcohol is to take a bottle of alcohol, uh, in this case vodka, and uh, it's 40%. I'm going to be running it through the simple distillation rig shown here and getting near 100% ethyl alcohol to do my succulent extraction with. The vodka is in a 500 milliliter boiling flask, which is in the heating mantle. And as you can see, it's just beginning to fume up and uh, condense on the upper part of the boiling flask. Soon, this will begin to distill over. The distillation of ethanol is now working. It's boiling in the boiling flask, and as we can see... We're beginning to get ethanol in the collection beaker. I only need about 300 milliliters. When I get that much, I'll stop. These are the ghost peppers that I'll be using for this succulent extraction video. Here's a quick look at the ghost peppers themselves. The next step will be to cut the ghost peppers up, and then they'll have to be dried. It's a very good idea to wear gloves for this process. I'll cut up the rest of the peppers and then pick up the video. The ghost peppers have now been chopped up. They just need to be loaded onto a little aluminum plate and put in the oven. The peppers are now in the Easy Bake oven. The oven's set at 200 degrees and it won't take too, too long for them to dry. They'll probably dry in the time it takes me to distill enough ethanol to get ready for the soxlet extraction of these hot peppers. They will dry out quite nicely in the Easy Bake oven. It's set at 200 degrees. I don't want to burn them, just slowly dry them out, get rid of the water content. I'm nearly done preparing my ethanol from my vodka. I've got nearly 300 milliliters of distilled ethanol now. 
And that's about all I need to run my sock slut, so I'll be stopping this distillation of vodka shortly. I have my 300 milliliters of ethanol, and the Easy Bake Oven has also dried out the chopped up ghost peppers. So the next thing I'll do is put the 300 milliliters of ethanol into the 500 milliliter uh, boiling flask that can be seen sitting in the heating mantle. To start loading the Soxlet extractor, I've placed one of these round cotton pads in the bottom so that it acts as a filter up the siphon tube outlet point. The sliced up peppers have been removed from the Easy Bake Oven. It did a perfect job drying them while I was distilling the ethanol. I've got a coffee filter started into the top of the Soxlet body. I'm going to now put the hot peppers into this filter paper and then force it down into the cavity of the Soxlet extractor. The ghost pe peppers are now closed up inside the coffee filter, which acts as a filter to keep any bits contained and inside, and I've also put a second uh, cotton pad down on top, as you can see. Now I'll set up the condenser, hook up its water, and then the extraction can begin. The Soxlet extraction apparatus is now loaded and fully set up. Water is flowing through the condenser, and the heating mantle has been turned on. How this works is the alcohol will boil in the boiling flask, its vapor will come up the neck of the flask and enter into this bypass tube where it will pass up and into the condenser area. It'll condense, drip down into the body of the slot, which will begin to fill up until it reaches the level of the siphon, which will then drain it back down into the boiling flask. As soon as the alcohol starts boiling in the mantle, I'll pick up the video and we'll show this working. My ethanol is just beginning to boil in the boiling flask at this point, so the Soxlet extraction will begin shortly. Alcohol vapors are beginning to enter that bypass tube so that they can get up to the condenser. As a matter of fact, they now have made it to the condenser. Ethanol can be seen dripping from the condenser's output at the bottom. It's now dripping down onto the filter pack containing the dried ghost peppers. Even with only the first few drops of ethanol dripping into the Soxlet body, we can see that an orange-yellow oil is beginning to collect in the cotton. The ethanol can be seen dripping onto the top piece of cotton. The Soxlet is now a couple of minutes into its first cycle, and as you can see, the siphon tube is nearly filled to the bend as the 
alcohol level rises in the cavity. We can also see we have a golden yellow color as the solvent extracts oils and capsaicin from the ghost peppers. The first cycle is about to turn over and drain the chamber by the siphon. This will happen uh, very shortly. It's just about at the top bend and ready to cycle. There it goes. We can see the first run pouring back in. That was the first cycle of the Soxlet. Meanwhile, the condenser continues dripping fresh, clean ethanol down onto the ghost peppers. This will fill up again and cycle again over and over until the ethanol runs clear through the extractor, then I'll know that the process is complete. The sock slit is about to turn over and siphon itself out for the second time. As we can see, we have quite a nice color of extract. And again, it siphons and flows back down into the boiling flask. There, it's siphoned out. The cycle will begin again for the third time. The sock slot is about to turn over for the third time. Here it goes. The extract has a nice orange-yellow color and can easily be seen draining back down into the boiling flask. Here's a quick overall view with the setup as uh, cycle number four is about halfway through. Each cycle takes approximately seven minutes with this particular setup. About twelve cycles would be required at least to uh, extract all of the capsaicin and oils from the ghost peppers.
Although it can take several hours to complete a Soxlid extraction, the process should never be allowed to run unattended. Always keep an eye on it all the way through. Cycle number four is just about ready to turn over and siphon out. We can see that the extract is still a deep orange-yellow color, and there goes the siphon. We can see the Soxlet drain. as the extract runs back down into the boiling flask. All of the equipment purchased for this extraction came from eBay. The heating mantle is a heat and stir mantle. I got it to gently used for about $70 or so. The boiling flask and uh, socklet body and matching condenser came from eBay. Again, as a little kit for about $75. So it wasn't too bad to set up to do the Soxlet extractions. Cycle number five is about to turn over and siphon. We can see even on the uh, fifth cycle that the extract is still a good deep orange-yellow color, indicating that lots of capsaicin and uh, ghost pepper oils are being extracted. There we have completion of the fifth cycle of extraction. Parts of the Soxlet apparatus can be covered with uh, some kind of heating blanket, or in this case uh, an old rag, but uh, I'm not going to run the rag typically in this video because of course it completely blocks the view of what's going on. Cycle number 10 is about to turn over and siphon. There it goes. It's more of a straw yellow color now than the deep orange yellow it was on the first couple of cycles. We can see, however, that the liquid in the boiling flask has collected a lot of capsaicin and uh, ghost pepper oils and has become deeply colored. Cycle number 15 is about to siphon and drain. Cycle number 18. It's starting to flow a lot clearer now, so I will probably stop the extraction at uh, around 20 cycles.
This will be cycle number 20. And there it goes. At this point, I've completed the sock slit extraction. Everything is now down in the 500 milliliter boiling flask that's in the heating mantle. I can now remove the sock slit and its condenser, and I can boil the ethyl alcohol out of the 500 milliliter boiling flask and collect it with my condenser. So I will set up to do this. I'm still using the same 500 milliliter boiling flask that was used with the sock slit, but I've now attached a still head and condenser set up to this boiling flask and I will now remove at least 200 milliliters of the ethyl alcohol at this point. Once I've gotten the bulk of the solution down, I think I'll switch uh, either to just boiling it out of a beaker, or I'll use a much smaller boiling flask. Haven't decided yet. We'll see you a bit later in the video. This distillation is now in progress, and we can see drips of ethanol dropping out into the 500 milliliter collection beaker on the right. I will allow this process to continue until I've extracted about 200 milliliters of the ethanol. At this point, I've stopped the distillation off of the ethanol. I have recovered about 225 milliliters of ethanol. There's still a little left in the boiling flask, along with the, the ghost pepper oil and capsaicin. Here is the result after removing about 225 milliliters of ethanol and recovering it. This is the 500 milliliter boiling flask that saw me through the whole procedure, and there's about 50 milliliters of ethanol, capsaicin, and uh, ghost pepper oil in the bottom of the boiling flask. Of course, also in there are the copper-plated steel 177 BBs that I used as my boiling chips to help things boil without going crazy suddenly, which alcohols like to do. Here's the current result of the extraction, about 55 milliliters of capsaicin, ghost pepper oils, and ethyl alcohol. I'm going to uh, evaporate a bunch more of the ethyl alcohol off, leaving me with the super hot ghost pepper oil. The 80 milliliter beaker has been set in my heating mantle with a little uh, rock wool insulation around to trap heat from escaping. I will use this to remove most of the remaining ethanol solvent. I've reduced it down to 20 milliliters with the heating mantle by simply evaporating out uh, 
any remaining ethanol until I got to 20 millimeters. It's still quite fluid, so I'll be able to uh, finish it up and pour it off into a storage bottle. Thanks for watching, and that was the Soxlid extraction of capsaicin and oils from ghost peppers. Very hot stuff. The ghost peppers are around a million and a half Scovilles, so what's in this beaker should be pretty fiery stuff. Here in the summary of the today's lecture, we have learned the different extraction methodologies that can be used for the extraction of alkaloids and other natural products from the plant's material. So this lecture is emphasized on the different extraction methodologies that people have used for the isolation of the alkaloids from the natural resources. At the end of this lecture, here is a list of recommended books. You may consult any one of these books. Thank you very much.